Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. It's the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the Kenner Silverhawks. This toy line from the 80s had an accompanying TV show. Not going to talk about that so much. I'm going to talk about the action figures. I'm going to talk about each one of the characters. I'm going to talk about the accessories, the gimmicks, and the price. Yes, the secondary market price on these is just ridiculous. We're going to talk about it. Coming up! So I have to be honest, when I was a kid, I thought these toys were terrible. I even uh, had some friends that had a couple, and all they really did with the gimmick of the, the ones my friends had were the arms popping up, and I thought that was kind of silly compared to G.I. Joe and all of that. But as an adult collector, they look amazing on a shelf. This is one beautiful-looking shelf when you deck it out with all these figures, and I like that. That's why I went after them and collected them. But let's get into talking about Quicksilver. Alright, taking a look at Quicksilver, he is one of the main figures, the main characters that's out there. Everybody's going to have a Quicksilver if they're going to collect Silverhawks. Now, the thing about these, the this, the main characters, I think like the main five or so, have a, a vac metalized, this one's silver, and the only one that's actually vac metalized silver is Silverhawk, uh, Quicksilver and Silverhawks. They're kind of the name, you think they're all silver. But it is beautiful, just really beautiful. But they do have paint on like the hand and the face, and that paint can rub off too. Now, the thing about it, the one party trick is you squeeze the legs and the arms pop out. And as a kid, I thought that kind of sucked. But there's only a few of them, the rest of them have some different gimmicks other than that. Now, with Quicksilver, he does come with Tallyhawk, and Tallyhawk basically has a gimmick where you can push that and close and collapse those. Now, they also made a bigger Tally Hawk, which I don't have, and I'm not really going after, but I might pick one up down the road. Don't really have a place to display the giant birds. But when it comes to this Quicksilver here, there's a couple of issues. First of all, you can start to notice I have an extra one. This is the first one I picked up, and it had just a lot of rub on the leg. And so you can see that, that when this vac metalized chrome plating starts to rub off, it looks terrible. So uh, I had to get a better one. Eventually down the road, I ended up getting him. And I'm pretty pleased with this version of him. But I wouldn't have been too ultra picky if it wasn't for the fact that this one is pretty common. If this was a really, really hard to get one, I probably would have just left it at that. But I did go out of my way to grab a bootleg. And I think that uh, bootlegs are kind of fun. So I kind of want to incorporate one or two bootlegs. I'm not going to go after a whole collection of bootlegs but the difference in this bootleg is that uh, this guy here there's no vac metalized plating his arms don't pop up they just go straight forward they're even worse articulation than that but yeah there's the bootleg now if you do take these uh you unclip which i don't advise to unclip it that much but if you unclip these you could move the arm forward it has a little bit of forward articulation uh again i'm kind of terrified of the whole construction of these things and i don't want to do too much more with them Next up, I want to talk about the standard Bluegrass figure, and Bluegrass is a pretty cool figure. Uh, he's one of the more common ones. Also, he comes with uh, the Sideman, I think the name of this thing here, and his guitar that just kind of does this, like it's his bird guitar, bird guitar. But anyway, he does uh, look pretty good. I like the coloring on him, and he is fully back metalized except for like the arm and the face, just like Quicksilver, but he doesn't have the gimmick itself the gimmick is in his guitar so i think you're supposed to be able to clip his guitar to his back and then squeeze his leg and then something moves inside there and it's supposed to make the i'm not i don't know i'm not that brave and i don't want to risk breaking these guys uh that's the problem with these is that they're pretty fragile if they're not broken yet and you got them unbroken don't do anything to break them next up we have copper kid from the planet of the mimes and all he really does is the same Signature gimmick of popping his arms out. But he does look good with this really beautiful gold vac metalized plating. And he has that green uh, tampograph paint right there. It looks really good. It looks really good. Here he is from the back. And one interesting thing is like the color of this here and the color of this right here kind of signifies which character it would go with. Plus, he has the smallest of all of the wings. But uh, he has laser disc. I think it's a whistle. He's just supposed to make a whistling sound, and that's everything with that figure because of all the beeps and noises that he makes instead of talking. Next up, we have Steelheart, one of the twins with the 
Rizor or Razor. I don't know what they're supposed to call this thing. But that's really what the bird does. And she has a similar uh, arm pop-up gimmick that Quicksilver and Copper Kid have. And she looks great. She looks really good. Now, the, the females back in the 80s were, I think, less produced, lower produced. So she is the most expensive toy in this line, aside from uh, one of the Ultrasonics we'll talk about here in a little bit. So of the ones I own, she's the one. I had to call in some favors to get her. And why are these things so expensive? And I'm going to say they're so expensive because, first off, they didn't sell very well back in the 80s. And what did make it through, getting them in good condition is hard. A lot of times they get scratched up and scuffed up and they don't look good. So that is a challenge. But on top of all of that, when you do a search on eBay for these things, there's still like 450 auctions. Pretty much everything I have you can find on eBay today, but you just have to pay. Looking at her, it's just, with some of these it's really hard huh, with all the lighting. It's just gonna blind you with all this shininess. I love shiny things. They do look really good. She's got the blue to match her. And, and yes, her uh, wings are different than Still Will. We're gonna see that here in just a second. Here we are with Steel Wheel. Now, my Steel Wheel is kind of rough. I actually have a couple, and they're all rough. Uh, I think this guy just, it was a cool character. Big, beefy guy. Got played with a lot. But you can kind of see the paint wear, uh, the, the chrome wear on him, and all of that. Now, he does have the signature arm pop-out gimmick, like you see with these first, like the, the main five, I guess. And then, this is his bird. And what is his bird's name? It's like Stronghold. And it's, it's basically <laughs> a clothespin. And then you just kind of clip it on. But clip it on there and, 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 and can he stand? Yeah, he can stand. He can pull that off. Anyway, kind of cool. I like the way he looks. Next up, we have Hot Wing and his bird, uh, the gyro bird. Now, I think this guy is pretty cool looking. Uh, he's He looks great. I love the, the vac metalized chrome. He's got... Tampa graph right here, but I thought I got mine broke, and well, oh, mine's broken. Look at these arms, because I didn't realize he has a different gimmick than the rest of them. Where he, you wind him up. Let's see. And then spin him. Let's see if we can get that on camera. Wind him up. And spin him. Now it's also different in the fact that. His wings, they don't clip to his back, even though he has a hole that could clip to his back. They're just uh, separately clipped on there. My wings are not in the greatest condition. Uh, again, I got this guy pretty cheap because I thought his chrome looked good, but his wings didn't look that good. But he has Gyro Bird, and Gyro Bird, of course, does the same thing he does. It flips around in a circle. But yeah, I think this is a pretty cool one of these. It is different. It adds variation, so they don't all just do the same thing. Next up, we have Condor with Jetstream. And so this guy here is kind of interesting looking. He's got a big old backpack that says Jetstream. He has vac metalized chrome on his head and, and other paint. He has a helmet on this that could go on him. And he comes with this launching mechanism type of piece here. And eh, mine doesn't work, but you put it in, you're supposed to push this lever. I have two of these. Oddly enough, neither one of them work properly. So, anyway, I just like this one because his paint looks the best. Again, these things get worn pretty bad. Now, looking at this, the the gimmick on this guy is the gimmick on this guy is entirely in his backpack, and you do this, and now he has a jetpack. A lot of fun. Commander Stargazer contacts Earth headquarters. Next up, we have. St Stargazer and Slybird. Stargazer is the leader of this whole organization, and Slybird has basically a magnifying glass. You can magnify right there on there. Get all the details in there. And it is a little magnifying glass. It actually works. Kind of an interesting, sort of cool gimmick. Now he does have some vac metalized chroming going on, on his head, going on, on his arm. Mine is a bit yellowed in the torso. Now I want to say I'll probably end up getting a better one of him. He is one of the cheaper ones, more common to get but getting them in good condition and with this bird and stuff, a little bit more. But I have to say that this is the very first Silverhawk that I ever bought. And I got them at a toy show for like three bucks, with just like this, 
I was asking five. Talked him down to three. I, try, I offered him five each for the rest of his Silverhawks, but he said no and laughed. I did not realize that at the time his $20 per figure was a good price. <laughs> Should have joined him on it. But anyway, this guy really doesn't do much. Uh, you can look, I think you can look through the back of his eye and see something. Yep, you can see through the back of his eye there. Pretty interesting. Kind of like the Bionic Man. Yeah, that's Stargazer. So now we're going to talk about this. Now, I, I have to think these came out in waves, but they all came out in 1986. And I can't really find exactly what came in what order and all of that. But it just seems like these were made later on. And let's come out with the Ultrasonic series and let's come out with these other characters. And uh, it just seems really strange that all of these share one thing in common. They're only vac metalized on the chest. Now, I think that that's good for play value. And I also think that these have survived better over the years. But again, it seems like maybe these weren't as interesting to the kids back at the time. But we're going to talk about each one of these real quick. Starting with Bluegrass here. Uh... He's supposed to have a different helmet. I'm, I'm trying to put the helmet from the first version on here, and it doesn't really work. But he's supposed to have his own helmet. I don't have any parts. Got him cheap. I just can't see spending ridiculous amounts of money on these things. But he's supposed to have another different guitar. It's gray. It's just a solid guitar. And he has, has a helmet. So uh, I think they kind of went backwards a bit when they went to this guy. I actually prefer the first version so much better than this version right here. Next up, we have the Ultrasonic Steel Wheel. And... One good thing about them, I, I think his chrome on this one looks pretty good, and it usually is pretty good. They have the visors. Now, they almost look like knights now with this giant visor on them, but uh, I can kind of see why they didn't put visors on the earlier ones because this is just so big and bulky. To make it look right, they would have been really small and broken very easily. But um, I'm not really sure what he's supposed to do. His wings go up, and then this piece comes down for something. Maybe mine's broken, I don't know. I'm not going to stress it and see what it does to break it. But he comes with a gun instead of a bird. And it almost, it's almost like they, the newer ones or the later ones they were making got cheaper than the original ones. But it's more simplistic in a way. I, I kind of like the way this one looks. But again, I prefer the fully vac metalized chrome versions of the character. So next up we have Moonstriker and Tailspin. And Moonstriker is another one that has an actual visor on him, but it's kind of strange because he doesn't really have a helmet. It's just a free-floating visor on him. But it's cool that they've got it, and he has probably uh, very, very little vac metalized plating to him, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. And his gimmick is a little bit different. He's He's got a spinning gimmick himself. I always thought when you pull the trigger... The whole thing moved, not just his belt, but he moves like this with his bird. So, I mean, that's a thing. I don't know how much fun that would be. But anyway, still a pretty cool looking figure. Next up, we have Flashback with his back lash bird that I don't have. Maybe I'll find a picture and throw it up. But I actually think this one looks really cool. I like the green. I like how it's just different. Really, pretty much out of all of them, he's different. He looks cool. And he's actually pretty easy to find. Now, he has the wings that uh pop up now this mechanism is it seems even more fragile than the first go around mechanism uh but it just really feels delicate but looks pretty good now he doesn't have the pop-up face i would have liked to have seen him with the pop-up face or pop-up helmet but that's cool he's also kind of hard to make him stand of course a lot of them are like that a lot of them it's tough to make them stand but anyway pretty cool all right next up let's get into the baddies of the bad guys we've got Buzzsaw with his Shredderator. Is that what it's called? Shredderator? Anyway, uh, it's it's kind of cool. It's a big, chunky, green dude. He stands pretty well, um, more or less. Uh, I like that about these. And, and the bad guys, some of the bad guys are actually some of the cheapest ones. Pretty easy to get your hands on. So uh, this guy wasn't hard to get at all. And I actually got an extra one. And both of them work very, very well. You do that. Arr. So that's kind of cool. These little things here turn too. They don't turn as part of the gimmick. It's just separate. And you can disconnect this bird. He holds on there pretty good. I like that. I do like how he holds on there really well. And it does this. 
for all that that's worth. Pretty cool. So next up we have Molecular, and this guy is kind of strange. Um, it says it comes with Vulture, I don't know, is that the name of his beads? Does his beads have a name? It's interesting. But anyway, looking at this guy here, he's supposed to look like a molecule, and uh, there it is, and he spins around. There's his gimmick. Maybe there's more to that than I understand. And then he has this, which is, which is kind of interesting, but what's, I think his arm pops off too and then you could do i've seen people do this like you see listings for a figure looking like that like that's molecular i mean it's it's interesting uh again i don't have to cry if the arm falls off because it pops right back in but i do want to show i've seen this little uh connection before it is the same connection the same connector that they used for the kidder centurions so i could actually Connect this to his shoulder in there, if I wanted to, and put him on a Centurion shelf, and look, we've got a new Centurion bad guy. Next we have Monster, uh, Monstar, and the thing about this guy is that he has kind of a head flip gimmick, he swaps heads when he does his transformation, and he comes with a bracelet, uh, what's he call his bracelet, Sky Shadow, and it's, it's cool, it does clip to his hand, which is good, so you don't lose him. And it really, all it does is, is, is let them fall over. Don't fall over. Is when you open the wings up, rams into someone and kind of snatches them. So uh, that's how that works. But let's look at the big party trick. If you squeeze his legs, his head swaps. So you want to make sure you got the front and the back piece that they didn't break off and that this is working. Give me the might and the power, might and the power, Moonstar of Limbo. Let's do that again. I think best for display is just to get two and have one showing each head. So, I mean, that was the best way to display it, in my opinion. The next of the baddies of the bad guys, let's move this down a little bit, is Hardware. Hardware is such a weird figure. Uh, like, so crazy. Giant, giant backpack. Looks like... Uh, Looks like a sleeping bag. Like, he's got a sleeping bag bundled up there. But, uh, theoretically, he could pull all kinds of stuff out of this backpack. That's why he's hardware. He doesn't come with a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, maybe there's a better way to open that than I opened it. But he comes with a bird. And hardware's bird is Prowler. And so, there it is. And the wings pop out. That's about all it does, really. Kind of cool, in a way. That they, the bird, I think, looks interesting. Just so interesting. He's so sleek and aerodynamic. But the thing is, he has to fit in this gigantic backpack. But a gigantic backpack, there's only a real small slot for him to fit in there. So, like, you can't put much in there. I was thinking maybe there's a way he launches out of there or something, but uh, it's not. doesn't look like it does that. It just slides in there and hangs out, I guess. I mean, I guess that's how it works. I mean, this button here. Oh, there it is. There's the launching gimmick. I knew it was on there somewhere. I know I'm going to regret this. I already regret that. All right, let's regret it again. There he goes. Next up, we've got Mumbo Jumbo with his air shock. Uh, this guy here. So what does the bird do? It's it's like it's like slams down like this, but it, it I think it feels more like a transforms into pull the tail out to get it to slam like that but it looks like it turns into a hammer he can hold his hammer kind of cool and it can clip onto something or whatever but the big gimmick with this guy is his head now this is so weird you have to pull the head up and then you squeeze the legs and his head moves around uh, you can get this his horns out there a lot of times he's missing the horns which makes the whole point of this figure pointless without the horns but uh people try to say oh yeah you could get them on all fours uh that doesn't look good i mean there's no way i'd want to display it like that whatsoever that's that's terrible so it's not really a transformer even though it's kind of feels like it could be he does look kind of cool and evil and menacing but aside from that a bit plain last up we have windhamper with his blasted tuning fork and this guy is kind of hard to get, and I still don't really understand how he's supposed to work. You're supposed to wind him up and use his button on the back and make his arms spin. Um, 
maybe I broke him, not really knowing how he works, or I got him broken, I don't know. But it's kind of strange. You wind him up and then push the button. But anyway, he is freaky looking, but he looks exactly like he did in the show. It, you know, this is like a 1980s uh, posable statue in a way. He looks really good. He's really solid. You can just set him down. He'll stand. With a lot of these Silverhawks, a lot of the figures don't want to stand very well. And this one does stand really well. Part of that stance and the pose is part of it. He's not much fun as an actual toy, but he looks really good on a shelf. And he's a good representation of the cartoon from back in the day. So I really hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Kenner Silverhawks toy line. Uh, maybe I'll do a part two talking about the vehicles and some of what I don't have, such as the Quicksilver and the Ultrasonic Quicksilver. That figure is quite elusive, really expensive, hard to get. The only one I didn't cover in all of this. So maybe we'll do that next time. Like, subscribe, share your memories down below. Tiderium Hanger out. What was that, Sheriff? E-flat major. She's a sergeant, Colonel. Release! Release! Release!